Martin. You might you might meet Shane Ritchie. Who knows? Fingers right. crossed. Or, or that chap who does the impression of David Essex. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And yeah. in the absence of the real David, he'll do. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, yes. You, mm? you, would you? Did you ever imagine that one day you'd have such a glorious, uh, lucrative career in voiceovers and? Well, no, I'm not the only one to have hey, a no, listen, career in voiceovers. I dream of having your voiceover career, as you well know. Um, you, you, I mean, just list some of the treats that people will have been persuaded <laughs> to buy over this Christmas period, thanks to you. I want one of those dot com. <laughs> Lombard Direct. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, now they're Kellogg's Crunchy Nut. Well, they are ludicrously tasty. <laughs> what else? I don't know what else I do. Some kind of coffee machine? Oh, yes. Uh, um, uh, Eleanor had bought the new Tassimo coffee machine. <laughs> Tassimo, pleasure perfected. Um, that's my sort of uh, cut price Stephen Fry voice. I also do a sort of Griffey Jones type voice uh, sometimes when I'm uh, uh, sort of doing uh, an uh, advert like that. Um, and for a while, of course, it was me that was saying see, speak, and surf with Sky. But now they've got some West Country numpty doing it. Weren't you furious? You told me that you were furious when you lost toilet duck. Oh, uh, no, not when I lost the duck, when I lost um, uh, the toilet paper with the puppy. Oh, Andrex. Because I. Here Here's a, here's a great showbiz story. I was at a do once, and Simon Pegg was there, and he said, oh, I've just been up for the uh, the Andrex puppy. And I, I thought, God, do I tell him I was up for it today as well. I, he said, I went up for it yesterday, he said, and I'd been in that day trying out for it, and they'd given me a big thumbs up. I thought I didn't tell him, and sure enough, there I was within a week. It was me, and I was full of myself, <laughs> and, I, and I felt superior to Simon Pegg. Sure. I think it's fair to say he's had the last laugh. But I, <laughs> I, I felt really good. I thought, yeah, Pegg, yeah, space that, you little <laughs> yeah. person. Anyway, then I went off on tour, did my first Keith Barrett tour, and we played Aberystwyth, uh, which is always a challenge. <laughs> and I was back in this lowly guest house after it, and tucked up in bed. It was freezing, it was a winter's night, the, wind, the wind's whipping down the boardwalk, <laughs> it was yeah. all cold on the beach. And, um, and I put the telly on. That was Bruce I, Springsteen. That was Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> you just yeah. joined us. Yeah, well, I think people would know that yeah. anyway. You can be very rude. Um, <laughs> and uh, I put the telly on, and up came the advert, little puppy. I thought, here I Ding go. The puppy opened its mouth, and, and it went. Went, oh, I'm a little puppy, <laughs> and it was Rick Mail. Oh, I'd been dropped. And here's the odd, perverse thing: in my moment of desperation, who did I call? Simon Pegg. You spoke to Pegg, and all credit to him, he talked me down because <laughs> I was ready to do something silly. And he said, "Rob, Rob, look," he said, "It's a topsy turvy business. Uh, anything can happen, you know." So it was you, it was me, it was Rick, you know. Sure. Um, and the only way I could placate myself was to drive down to Cornwall, visit Rick Mayle's farm, and tamper <laughs> with the brakes of his <laughs> Um We uh, probably ought to play some more music. There's a lot of people out there who don't uh, care about our showbiz lives. They don't care about our lucrative voiceover work. They've probably got proper jobs. They've got such as uh, Sam. You have to sometimes work in a call centre. Yeah, that's do you right. really? Yeah. How often do you do that? Um, not as often as I should. It's just dire. There's like people call up. We had a man very recently who called up and went, How do I get porn on my phone? I was like, What? Excuse me? How do I get porn on my phone? I was like, Well, you've come to, to a different department, I'm afraid. Just tell me how to get porn on my phone. I was like, really I'm really don't sorry. Know I, I misdialed. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get porn on your phone? Surely you get a girlfriend and make it yourself. I don't know. I'd never been there. Okay, it's make a note of that. Sad. Very um, open-minded. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> very encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we uh, we say goodbye to Rob, who's uh, yeah. probably got to go off and uh, got family, the wreckage family for his family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll have a musical choice from Sammy. What have you chosen for us, Sam? I've Me? chosen. Um, you know, I Sam. She gets furious. No, I really will rip yeah. your eyes out. Um, oh, I've chosen deja vu then. <laughs> Why? With you saying that and then you saying that. Oh. Wow. Sorry. No, no, don't apologise. It's a lovely moment. <laughs> I'm glad I've left you with something to remember. Um, oh, you have. And now listen to this song, Rob. It's cracking. It's the 12 Days of Christmas covered by the Joseph and Mary Jane. Thanks very much. What I'll be remembering is not so much that, <laughs> but the bit about the homemade porn. <laughs> The Joseph of Mary train doing 12 days of Christmas. Got a little bit of mince pie there between the teeth. Apologies for that, very unprofessional. Now, thank you very much, Sammy. Uh, do you want to explain yourself, or...? 
<laughs> do, no, do you think I should? I just wonder if there's any more information that's um, just got a, an amusing story attached, a heartbreaking. It's not an amusing story, but if you're into your quirky Christmas music, it's off an album that came out last year called It's Not Like Christmas. Clever. Mm. And it's all strange versions of songs or new songs by really great bands, including Duke Special and The Amazing Pilot, who I played last week. We have got some live music coming up from the wonderful Frank Turner. Stay mm. tuned for that if you are bored with us nattering. And uh, we will say goodbye to the lovely Rob Brighton after we heard from the Super Furry Animals. Super Furry Animals, show your hand one of the tunes of the year. And um, Welsh, of course, the Super Furry Animals, Rob. I imagine you've heard of them. I've heard of them. I like to think they've heard of me. And all is well in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we let you go, we wanted to, to just find out quickly, uh, what, what would be a typical uh, Christmas for the Bryden household? Traditional. It's traditional. We're not trying to buck any trends. <laughs> uh, we're not trying to start... Uh, <laughs> An anti-Christmas movement, uh, not even just for the sake of it. You know how some people disagree with things just for the sake of it, like they go and see a Bruce Springsteen concert and say, well, it was all right. Yeah. Um, no, it'll be tra traditional, all the trimmings. Uh, we've got a lovely tree. Well, you've seen the tree. Okay? Yes, you, you witnessed the tree. Um, we'll be in that red room for the for the eating of, of the food, where all the food was laid out when you came. But yes. we, we shifted the table around. Okay. So please don't, please Wh don't get that in your head as the okay. picture of how the room is going to be. Because if that were the case, a lot of people would be pressed up against the window. Yeah, no, they? that would make sense. Yeah. But where would the sofa be? No, we're not talking, this is different, never mind. Okay. We're having a, a traditional Christmas, yes. And um, what can we look forward to if we are Rob Brydon fans? Hmm. Perhaps in the new year. Well, uh, fans of Gavin and Stacey, the multi-award winning uh, cross-culture clash comedy, returns to BBC Three in the middle of March and then goes on to two, uh, in which I give my performances Uncle Bryn, of course, to great acclaim. Um, <laughs> mesmerising, Radio Times. Um, <laughs> then I'm, I'm make, currently making a documentary uh, called Rob Brydon's Identity Crisis for BBC Four, all about uh, grappling with what it is to be Welsh. Who are the Welsh? Well, what, what are we all about? Uh, and also, I, I sort of returned to doing stand-up comedy, and you see me uh, going into little clubs and, and trying out material sort of about Wales, and then finally doing this uh, show in a, in a theatre, which we did this week in Aberdeer, and you see how the material develops, and, you know, bloody believe me being very nervous backstage, and uh, not being very nice in the first gig. I, I, was, a bit, I was a bit nasty to the a audience. A bit to the audience. But yes, I was, and, and, and until you watch it back, you don't realise, you see. And it was very, very interesting. Having dabbled about. with stand-up, do you find, uh, as I have, do you find that it's, uh, what does it say about you psychologically? That's what always worries me. What, what does what say about you? Well, what is it that uh, makes us want to go out in front of a room of strangers and yeah. think we can make them laugh? Isn't that just a bit oh. weird? Well, yeah, but this is this is the goodbye, isn't it? How long have we got? I mean, that's a massive. Thanks for question. coming, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> do you want it? Do you want it in a media-friendly sound? I thought for the first time I'd asked a genuinely that's interesting a good question, question that, that might is. get under the skin of our Bryden, but no, no, no it, it has. Once again, he bats it away, perhaps with a jolly impression. It's uh, scared of giving a little piece of himself to the listener, <laughs> there, hiding behind the voices, man of a thousand voices. I, I wonder what Hugh Grant would think of that question. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's really is a sort of fascinating uh, question. <laughs> 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 Sammy, I wonder if you might pop out to the car park and give me a blow <laughs> by blow account of what's been going on. You see what I did there? I pulled it back from That's rudeness. Clever. Um, Rob, on that note, uh, so thank I'm not going to answer so the question much. why, what is it about this? In a media friendly soundbite, please do. All right. Um, well, I, I don't know. Well done. There we are. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was uh, profound, and um, it's going to be. This is going to be a listen again favourite. I think it will be. We're giving something for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David Essex fans. <laughs> Everybody yeah. over forty has got something they can enjoy. <laughs> can I thank your listeners for 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 tuning in? Wish them all a merry Christmas to everybody. Not just on Six Music, but right across the network. <laughs> not so much Radio Seven because that's just repeats. But everybody else. <laughs> I mean, you're 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 greeting a machine there, aren't you? In all honesty. But everybody else. <laughs> Radio's one, not so much Radio One. I, I feel alienated from that, but certainly Radio Two, um, Radio Three, which I'm starting to enjoy. Four, definitely. <laughs> yes. uh, five for all the news and <laughs> six. Everybody that works on it is part of it, or or just who listens to it. Interesting, of course, though that uh, you've neglected to mention there the Asian Network. Yeah, I've never got on with um, <laughs> all the networks, although the Asian Network is. Funnily enough, one of my favourites, and I have a great many Asian friends. So, <laughs> on behalf of all my Asian friends, but not just Asians, all minorities, because I don't. I think it's wrong of you to single out. It's the it's what the BBC did. Yeah, I um, say, I say, all minorities, and I, I, I list myself in there being Welsh because yeah. we're technically a minority. Yeah. 
<laughs> Great. Well, um, once again, I thank you uh, very much indeed, Rob Bryden, for coming in, offering such uh, joy and impressions to the show. A round of applause in the Steve Wright style for uh, the wonderful Rob Bryden. Merry Christmas to you, Rob. Can I just say a Merry Christmas, not just to all the networks, <laughs> but to all the shopkeepers out there who are working hard at this time of year. Harry, it's time for your Christmas musical choice. This is Christmas number one by the Bitter Springs. Not just the shopkeepers. I mean, there are taxi drivers, dry cleaners, there's all sorts of... Harry's uh, musical choice this Christmas time, and uh, what have you gone for there, Harry? Yeah, I mean, like Bruce Springsteen needs my support. That's uh, the Bitter Springs, Teddington's finest, uh, with their track Christmas Number no. One, uh, which was released in '98 to uh, little interest, but it's very, very good. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we will have uh, Amy, Wy uh, Amy Winehouse. No, 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 no. We will not. Uh, that lady. Who knows? I don't want to even bring her up at Christmas time. It's too tragic. It's brought, it's brought a tear to my eye just thinking of the poor woman. Uh, we'll have Amy Mann doing her version of Winter Wonderland after this. Amy Mann doing her version of Winter Wonderland. We say goodbye to Rob Bryden, but he has returned. And why wouldn't he? Because live music time from the uh, wonderful Frank Turner. Now, Frank um, put out a great album early in the year. I think it was January, Frank, wasn't it, that it came out? Uh, called Sleepers for the Week. And um, it was one of my highlights of the year, if you don't mind me saying. I hope that that's not uh, going to embarrass I'm you. flattered. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for uh, producing the album. And curiously, we met on the uh, Steve Lamack roundtable, which I think was my first appearance yes, on Six did. Music. And it's mm. lovely to have you here for our uh, last show of two... Th no, actually, we've got another show, haven't we? Oh, that would be oh. so beautiful. Should have thought it through. Didn't. Um, but anyway, Frank has come in. Now, you are, <clears throat> dare I say it, you're a little bit the worst for wear, am I right? I'm, I feel like I've explored that phrase today and really felt what it means. Sean, <laughs> you said you to me you've been drinking No, for... well, no, it's just basically everybody has their Christmas parties at the same time. It's hugely inconsiderate. They could spread them through the year, surely. <laughs> and you've been drinking solidly for about three weeks, you think? Something like that. It's yeah. not something to be proud of, though, really. So despite the fact that you had to come on the radio today, you thought... I was trying to go to bed for most of last night because I was like, I have to do terribly responsible and exciting things like go on the radio tomorrow. But this was apparently not not acceptable behaviour. Sure. People I was with and I was forced to drink more vodka. So how do you think the music's going to sound today? Uh, cracking. Great. Well, we should be the judge of that as you play uh, the first <laughs> of your tunes. What are you going to play for us? Uh, uh, to begin with? Uh, well, I, I, as you requested, I'm going to start with one of my tunes, um, which is apparently you've played the recorded version. Oh yes, indeed. Now, is, is it romantic fatigue? It is indeed. This is one of the highlights, I think, from your yes. album. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is. Uh, I could do the secret chorus as well. Would you like me to? Do I the would love to hear chorus? the secret chorus. All right. As long as yes, as long as there's no blue, blue language. Because no, I know no, some no, of your I'm, album. No, no, I have I have a dark past with blue language on the radio, which I've overcome. Great. And stood up in a meeting and said. Do you do Should we, we just... count you in or? Um, no, I'm just going. Okay, go you just do your thing. All right, here we are, Frank. Here live on the Steve Show. And uh, one of the many highlights from Frank's, uh, is it your, it was your debut album? It was right? my debut solo album, but I don't like using words like solo and uh, solo artist and singer-songwriter, they bring me out of rash. You would prefer people just take the music and enjoy yeah, it for what yeah, it is? Yeah, this is to, I used to be in a band. Yeah, sure. Hooray. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who wasn't? Who, I don't know. I've never been in a band. But, I mean, uh, other band members, it's like, it's so 2005. So it really was. Um, now, because you, you mentioned to me that, as well that you've, you've got a, you, have you already recorded your new album? I have already recorded my new album, and indeed uh, well I, I haven't mixed it somebody else has mixed it but um, and they've done a smashing job uh, and it's going to be out on the 31st of March next year which is my little sister's birthday oh how beautiful what a tr wonderful and will it be a wonderful treat for her because well, uh, your last album was a bit full of bad language no I've cut I've cut down g mothers everywhere can rest assured oh, good. I've, I've mended my ways you've cleaned up your act I have jolly good and uh, you told me that this album is uh, is a thousand times better than the, uh, uh, the previous one it, uh, it actually is, yeah. It's kind of, um, just so, well, I mean, everybody would say that. If I was sitting here kind of going, well, it's kind of the same, really. Sure. That would be lame, and I should go and do it again. Um, but yes, I'm very pleased with the new material and the new songs and everything else. Now, we asked you if you would rustle up something, uh, with a Christmas flavour. Yes. Have you managed to do that for me? I have managed to do that. I've got the words written on a piece of paper that's down there. Okay. And this stool is Maybe Rob Bryden could, uh, lift that piece of paper up. He's not, this he's is, not um, beneath him. Well, we were, we were, we were discussing electronically. The idea of me playing a poke song. Yeah, somebody here would do the Kirsten McCall part. Unfortunately, in attempting to method act my way 